Good evening, everyone. So I'm very thankful to all of you who are here, who made it to our uh, meeting this evening of the York NAACP. Please also uh, be reminded that our meetings are every fourth Tuesday at 6.30 at Christmas Attics here at 605 South Duke Street. So hopefully we'll uh, also see you in May. Um, we, as you see, are videotaping the plan for today because these candidates were so gracious to re respond to our last minute request. Um, the plan for today is that they each would give about a five minute presentation. And I did ask them to consider the issues that are important to us as an organization. So if you have a pressing question, because we weren't really going to go back question and answer, but if you do have a pressing question um, at the end of, say for instance, the uh, 10th Congressional District candidates, then uh, raise your hand so we know. But otherwise, what we were thinking is this was a meet and greet. There's some snacks over to my right. Um, please help yourself too. But after they give their stump speeches, that we, you know, you can have some personal interaction with these candidates. Because sometimes what they say at the podium doesn't always show who they are as a person. And one of the things that I absolutely know is you're putting people in those positions and you need to know who they are. Um, because and know whether or not they have your interests at heart, whether or not they will be serving you or some other interests. So we want you to vote. And we want you to be informed voters. Because we understand that the more you know, the more willing you're able to, more willing you are to go out to vote, and speak to others about voting. Well, good evening. My name is uh, George Scott. I'm a lifetime Democrat, and I'm running for the 10th Congressional District. And like all of our candidates here, I'm running to defeat Scott Perry. But just as importantly, I'm running to restore Congress to its primary mission, to its purpose of serving the people who live in this district. Now, I grew up uh, here in this district, so I have deep roots, uh, have uh, strong ties to the community, and, uh, but I've spent my lifetime really in service. Uh, after graduating from Georgetown University, I served for 20 years on active duty as a United States Army officer. And I don't know if any of the rest of you have served in the military, but I will tell you, it is the most integrated institution in our nation today. It brings together people, and regardless of race, religion, gender, or political beliefs, you learn how to come together, work together, and overcome some extreme challenges. So I was blessed by that experience. I got to do a lot of very difficult jobs, um, served in multiple combat operations, spent a year in Korea, spent four years in the Middle East, retired, though, as a lieutenant colonel, because at some point you take off the uniform, but I wanted to continue to serve. And so I spent a couple years living and working in Northern Virginia, and then in 2009, I was called home here to Northern York County, and I uh, went to work as a pastor. I've spent the last nine years serving in ministry. I'm an ordained Lutheran pastor. And again, it's all about people, just as it is in the military. It's all about people coming together, meeting them where they are, hearing what their needs are, and then making sure those needs are met. So in my day-to-day -day calling, we have things like we have a community food pantry that meets once a month to distribute food to families that are in need from the local community. We support children from the local school who are disadvantaged by delivering food to the school each month. We have a variety of ways that we help people in need. I've served in our nation's armed forces. I've served the church, and now I'm ready to serve you as your congressman. And what I've learned here in the year that I've been campaigning is that the people of this district, as you know, are good, decent, hardworking people, and they're people who deserve much better leadership than what we've got in Congress right now. Would you agree with me on that? Yes. Now, there are people who really just want their representative to represent them. Imagine that innovative idea. And so my pledge to you is that once elected, that's what I'm going to do. I will work for you and for you only. I will work for you to ensure that we have affordable and accessible health care. I will work for you to create good paying jobs along with skilled workers to fill those jobs. 
I'll work for you to ensure that we have safe, high-quality public schools. And I'll work for you to take on issues like gun violence and like the uh, injustices that exist in our incarceration system to make sure that the lives, particularly for people of color and communities of color, are treated with equal justice and equal, equal dignity. You know, as a pastor, my faith teaches me that we're all created in the image of God and that we're all worthy of dignity and respect and love. And that is what guides me through my life. That's what guides me not just in my current calling, but will continue to guide me as I go to Washington, D.C. Now, Sandra asked us to talk a little bit about the, uh, some of the issues that are facing, in particular, communities of color. And mass incarceration is certainly one of them. And I think that's one of the ones that is most important. But even before that, we've got to make sure that we have good, strong, safe public schools because a good education is the best way to lift people out of, uh, out of poverty and into circumstances where they have opportunity. But it's got to be more than good schools. It's also got to be good jobs that people can go to. The best way, uh, the folks say in, um, in a ministry that's out in California, the best way to stop a bullet is with a good job. Um, but we've got to go beyond that, and we've got to look at the way our law enforcement operates. So a couple things that I would advocate for would be, number one, expanding community policing. Let's make sure that our police officers reflect the communities that they are serving. Number two, let's ensure that we mandate body cameras for all law enforcement officers so that everyone involved in each incident knows what the facts of the incident were. Third, we need to reduce these mandatory sentencing guidelines and allow judges to have the opportunity to judge each case on its merits. Fourth, I would say we need to eliminate for-profit prisons. There's no way that our prisons should be making money based upon keeping people in jail longer. And lastly, we need to ban the box on employment applications so that when someone is released from incarceration, they have an opportunity to get back on the right path in life and to resume the rights that they have as a U.S. citizen. Those are a few of the ways that we can do this. They're not the only ways. Look, folks, you've got uh, good candidates here um, running for the 10th district. We all like each other, and we're all working as hard as we can to make sure that you're going to have the best choice come May 15th. But what you've really got to ask yourself is, how are we going to defeat Scott Perry? And with respect to the fellow candidates, I would offer to you that I'm your best choice to go head-to-head -head with Mr. Perry and defeat him come November. So again, my name is George Scott. I'm a lifelong Democrat running for Congress in the 10th District. Thank you.